Hello, I'd like to talk a little bit about external thermal insulation composite systems, which abbreviate to ETIX. You have probably come across this video in your research on various um, ways and systems of wall insulation. Well, external wall insulation is by far the most effective way to insulate a house. Uh, when carried out properly, it will significantly reduce or eliminate altogether all the thermal bridging from your walls. The house you see comprises most likely all of the most common features that affect installation of external wall insulation systems. It has front extension with sloped roof. The roof finishes flush with the existing wall at the side. You can see that there is no overhang here. Half of the front facade is finished with decorative brick. There is an alarm box. There are gas and ESB meter boxes. And there is aircon box. The ESB cables run down on the surface of the wall from the old swan neck insulators to the meter box. There is a side gate, a gas boiler flue, there is a satellite dish, external water tap, there are external lights with some wiring on the elevation. There are a number of wastewater pipes projecting through the wall and connecting to the discharge stack. There is a rear ground floor extension with a sloped roof abutting the rear wall. There is a system of downpipes and there are ventilation openings with grills mounted on the surface of the walls. You will probably find that the majority of these features or elements are present on the elevation of your house as well. Implementation of attics will require modifications or adjustments to all of these elements. We have prepared this animation to demonstrate the proper measures that should be undertaken to do the job properly. This is the standard by which we would like our work to be measured. Before the actual installation of attic system on your walls begin, there is a need to carry out a whole list of preparation works. We normally begin with disconnecting the downpipes and flipping the top bends, if it is possible, to divert the roof runoff away from the wall. Also, all pipes projecting through the walls of the building have to be extended and the entire discharge stack relocated away from the wall to make room for insulation system. Special flashing needs to be fitted in this location to allow the gutter to be moved away from the wall and to make room for insulation system. This detail is essential if you have a similar sloped roof abutting the wall. All existing light fittings need to be disconnected and all wiring that exists on the surface of the wall need to be dressed in conduits. It is a bad practice and a fire hazard to allow an unprotected cable to touch the fabric of the insulation panels. The existing water tap needs to be extended. The existing gate need to be removed and suitable structural support need to be fixed to the wall in the location where the gate will be refitted. Like you see here, two timber blocks. If your gas meter box is mounted on the wall of your house, there are only two options that are accepted by the board gosh. The first option is to move the meter box to a suitable alternative location, for instance a boundary wall. The second option is to temporarily remove and then refit the meter box. Both options required Borgosh's assistance to work on the meter itself and the supply pipe. In this video we're showing the second option combined with changing of the surface mounted meter box to a recessed one. To avoid an excessive Borgosh charges, the initial work can be done by our, our registered gas installer. He will disconnect the existing meter box and make all the necessary adjustments to the pipe that is entering your house. We will then construct a recess in the wall behind the future gas meter 
and fit an insulation panel there. This will remove any possible thermal bridging at this location. We will then construct a timber frame structure that would support the installation of a new recessed meter box. The actual installation and reconnection of the meter box has to be done by the board gosh. The existing gas flue will most likely not be long enough to accommodate the insulation system. All the work involved with extending the flue have to be done by a registered gas installer and certified at completion. It is not allowed to cover any of the ESB supply cables with insulation system. Before any insulation work commences, ESB needs to unclip the existing service cables from the wall. They would normally replace the old swan neck insulators with new aerial brackets and also install a new ABC aerial if the existing aerial is bare or PVC covered. The alarm box need also to be removed from the wall and the projecting cable dressed and conjured. We normally remove all the existing window reveals to make room for insulation in these locations. We would also cut back the existing sills. Now the new pressed metal sills are normally installed. These are the only type of sills approved by the NSAI. Depending on the ethics system used, there are different types and designs of them as well. All the existing vent grills are removed from the walls. With respect to the satellite dish, it is normally fitted with enough tolerance to allow for installation of attic systems. Now that we have all the preparation works taken care of, we can begin the actual installation of the insulation system. We normally start with installation of extruded polystyrene boards for the plinth and fitting the starter tracks at the perimeter of the building and above low level roofs. Please notice how the polystyrene finishes around pipes or gullies. Some attic systems require starter tracks to be fitted vertically at the boundary wall. We now start installation of insulation panels. In this instance, it is a 100mm graphite enhanced expanded polystyrene. If there is a corner window, the sill should be done in one piece or with the use of proprietary connector. Fitting of insulation boards has to be done on a suitable surface. Any loose existing render or paint need to be removed along with any possible vegetation. If the condition of existing wall is poor, it is first treated with a special undercoat. Along the line where your property meets the neighbors and where the gas flue passes through the wall, we would use a Class A Rockwool fireproof insulation. Around window reveals, we would use a thinner insulation boards to minimize thermal bridging in these locations. These are normally 20 to 30 millimeters thick, depending on the allowable space. Along the lines where insulation touches the window frame and where it touches the roof soffits, we would normally install a special self-expanding tape. We would now extend all the room vents and fill all the possible gaps between the insulation panels with expanding foam. Please notice how insulation boards are installed around sills. The insulation continues up to the underside of the sill, reducing any possible thermal bridging in this location to a minimum. All insulation boards up to this point have been fitted with a special adhesive. We would now install additional mechanical anchors to reinforce the connection between the system and the existing walls. At points where a roof does not provide sufficient overhang, proper flashing needs to be installed. We would normally provide a 50 by 50 mm UPVC trunking along the route where the ESB service cables will be later installed.
we would now install corner profiles in all the corners around windows, doors, house corners, etc. Additional pieces of reinforcing mesh should be provided at all corners of window and door openings. We would now install a reinforcing mesh along with a layer of adhesive of a sufficient thickness to cover the mesh completely. All these operations are done simultaneously with the application of adhesive. We have shown them here in this order only to demonstrate the proper makeup of the reinforced layer. After the reinforced layer is completed, some systems require additional render undercoat to be applied. At this point, final render coat can be applied. This one has been chosen to match the previous render and to tie in with the existing neighbor's house. The palette of available render textures and colors is very wide. You can visit our website in the top right hand corner or request a brochure to see just how wide the spectrum is. If you have a decorative brick on your elevation and wish to externally insulate walls here but still keep the brick finish, there are two suitable systems available on the market. We will demonstrate one of them. However, it needs to be pointed out that the NSAI have not so far approved any of these systems. And this means that this work is not supported by any of the government grant schemes. Installation of the system starts with fitting of the starter tracks. Then proprietary insulated panels are installed on adhesive to the wall. The panels have tracks that will later provide support for brick slips. The panels are additionally mechanically fixed to the wall with anchors. The brick slips and corner pieces are glued to the panels and then grouted. We then construct the insulated plinth, fit light fittings, fan covers, etc. The remaining work include refitting of all the downpipes, installation of the aircon box extension, installation of ESB box extension. At that point ESB needs to fit the cable into the trunking provided. New vent covers are now fitted. The gas flow cover is installed. And external lights are refitted with a special fixings that connect to the structural wall beneath the insulation system. The walls of your home are now properly insulated. You now have a home that stays warmer in winter and cooler in summer. A brand new facade that is resistant to weathering and to somewhat airtight. You had a huge choice of finishes, so the color and appearance of your home is just the way you wanted it. You are contributing to the reduction of the greenhouse gas emissions. This means that your home has a less harmful effect on the environment. Plus you get a far higher BER, building energy rating. It is now compulsory to have a BER certificate when you sell or rent a house in Ireland. You will have significantly lower energy bills and you can avail from the 4,000 euro government grant.